Your head. Why? Well, alright. You know, I know that your father is a zealot. Yes. 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 You seem to be quite conscious of this fact. <laughs> you are afraid people may take him to be younger than you. No, I mean older than you. Is that so? What are you, why are you, why are you making this point? This I can't understand. <laughs> No, the point is that you are conscious of the fact that you people may consider you to be older than he is. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> so every time we have to explain. <laughs> now the question you asked, as I understood it, pertained to a situation which arises during the advent of a prophet. And it is perhaps a constant situation applicable to every prophet. That uh, although the prophets come with some evidence from Allah and with, uh, with some miracles sometimes and some extraordinary evidence of in, in their support of their truth, yet they are rejected and rejected so mercilessly and cruelly. And perhaps what bothered you most was uh, the rejection of Jesus Christ or Moses, was it Moses? Moses, yes. That although Moses was uh, to, should have been accepted, he had every reason to be accepted by, the, by his people in total. <coughs> He should have been received with open arms, so to say. Yet he was again rejected. Why this happens? Is that so? So now, the fundamentals should be understood. And those fundamentals will be applicable to every situation, every civil situation, I mean. And by fundamentals, I mean, first you must understand the human nature and its behavior, which is a constant, which never changes. And in relation to this, the whole phenomena will be manifestly understood by you. The human nature is such that when a prophet comes, they are already bad, these people, and they do not want to bow to an authority. By nature they have become rebellious, and this is why they have already rejected the previous law which they, in which they believe. Knowing that that law is correct and has been revealed from Allah and believing in it, yet they do not act accordingly. So that unrighteousness, as I mentioned yesterday, is the fundamental cause or maybe a symptom of their conduct and behavior. A people who believe in a thing yet do not act accordingly positively prove that they are not ready to bow to any authority. Even to that authority to which they have themselves of volition succumbed before and have bowed down. Yet in practice they, they have rejected it. So how can such a people accept a new authority? which is doubtful as compared to the previous one. As far as the belief in the previous authority is concerned, they are born with that belief. Yet in every practice, in every reality, they have already rejected it. For example, now consider the case of the Muslims of today. They believe fully in the truth of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa they believe fully in the truth of the Holy Quran, but do they act upon 
the Holy Quran? Is, is it an Islam which is only observed in television in Pakistan and newspapers and government statements? Or is it an Islam which is seen in the streets of Pakistan and houses of Pakistan and the hearts of Pakistan and the blood streams of Pakistan? And anywhere else? I'm just quoting an example, being from Pakistan, it is a name which comes to me first. But if you look in detail, you will find that the whole life system is totally divorced from Islamic values. There are people who say that Islam is true, who believe in the Holy Prophet's uh, highest station, not only as a prophet but as a highest station. Yet they do not follow him in practice. Their houses are not Muslims, the Vakda is not Muslim, the Patwa Khanas are not Muslim, the um, revenue system is not Muslim. Everything you observe, even the courts in their behavior and conduct I mean. One of the judges, for instance, uh, once uh, came to Ragwa and uh, delivered a lecture. So by judges I mean one of, one of the Supreme Court judges. And he addressed the college students and there he revealed that of the experience of the experience he had gained during his tenure as justice in every capacity. And also he said, and also the experience I have as my career as a lawyer and advocate prior to my becoming a justice makes me believe that uh, of all the people who come for evidence under oath, there is not a single one of which I can say he is truthful. Not a single one in the whole experience of his, his life. As a magistrate, as, you know, I mean, as an advocate, as well as a justice. And he says sometimes what they say is true, but they are not witnesses to that. And sometimes they are witnesses, but what they say is not true. So in every case, whether the case in itself is true or, or, or false, the witnesses always are false. And they bear witness in the name of Allah, in the name of all that they hold, uh, you know, revered and everything which they respect. So this is the state of affairs. Now, this, the psychological situation of this nation is applicable to every psychological situation before this time. This is why I have brought you to this present age, because this age you understand better. Now, knowing full well that having accepted an authority, having born with that belief, they have practically rejected that authority. How can a sane man expect them to starting to start going before a new authority while the previous one has not yet been accepted in a sense I mean in words it is accepted so this is the fundamental to which I refer the previous has to be first digested then the sec the question of the second one would arise now it reminds me of a joke in the Punjabi language which it is uh, perhaps would be difficult for me to translate, but it's a very good joke. And it is applicable to this situation. So to relax the atmosphere, let me try to translate it into English as best as I can. In Punjabi, we have a custom, in Punjab we have a custom that uh, if uh, villagers, I mean the male, the, the men from some villages, visit their sisters who are married to some other um, the relatives or somewhere in some other village and they pay a visit to their sister they take uh, a sort of sweet along with them which is called pinni you know made of uh, rice. 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 Some, rice. Thing, some sweet thing <coughs> let's, let's leave it at that pinni is a rounded ladoo shape, you know, about the size. <laughs>